opportunities to look at things inside of it. You know, although we know that there are people, they won't like what they hear. There's a lot of things I hear in this world that I don't hear. So help us to grow and be who you would have us to be. In the blessed name of your mighty son, Yahshua, who we call Jesus. Amen. Amen. And even so, amen. One of the things that when we look at the scriptures and we look at the mighty things that we see contained in it, we have issues that many times we don't even think about. And this is the question that I have for us tonight. What was the purpose of your God bringing us to his kingdom? What was the purpose? Now, if you have been with us, you realize that I was teaching up until the book of Titus, and that was this last part of the third chapter. I don't know if this is the second or third time that I've gone through the book of Titus, but I decided to go through the scriptures and show up, show some emphasis on what had happened in our history and why and how it matters to the Most High God, why it matters whether something is black and white, why do these things matter when other people say that they don't? Now, that doesn't mean I won't talk about these things any other time because they're replete in our life. They're replete in the heritage and what we have inherited in this world. And by these things being replete in what we've inherited, we have to realize that the word of God deals with all issues. But moving back to Titus, let me bring you in with me to where I am. As a matter of fact, I can go ahead and call my conference line. I had called it earlier, but I didn't have anybody on the conference line. So let me call it back and see if it comes up. I'll know in just a second. It'll say, I think recording in progress. Hello. I need you to put me in recording, okay? Thank you. Actually, I dialed the wrong number, you all. I was actually trying to call the conference line and I called uh, my wife, 566-9585. If somebody wants to call it, that's the number, 404-566-9585. Eighty-five. What was the purpose? Did he just come here to for us to learn how to sing a song? Did he come here to just allow people to say, okay, we're going to accept your son as the Messiah, and when we accept him as the Messiah, we can go into heaven. We can just catch a little boat, we can catch a little plane, or we can catch a cloud, and we can go on up to heaven. Is that what he was there for? Well, we're not going to find that in the scripture anywhere. So let me go ahead and share my screen. In my screen, you will see on my left-hand panel, it's where I have it listed. What is What was the purpose of Yah, God, bringing, his, his son, bringing us to his kingdom? We had stopped in Titus, and I perceive it to be around verse three or four. If it was more, then that's okay. We can cover it again. But in verse four, let me bring you there and let me show you what we're looking at. It says here, put them in minds to be subject to principalities and power and to obey magistrates and to be every and be ready to every good work. He's putting the emphasis, the apostle Paul is putting emphasis there on works. And you'll have people say works are not necessary. Works don't bring you closer to God. Works don't drive you away from God. It's a non-necessity. As I was listening to a systematic theology today, listening to Dr. John Frame and his voluminous um, treaty on what we talk about, systematic theology, he said, Martin Luther said, there's two kingdoms. There's a kingdom that we have of the will and the law of the Most High God. And then there's the secular kingdom. And the secular kingdom and the 
kingdom of the Most High God should never come into play together, which is, which has to be wrong. Because, see, your secular kingdom has morals. It has standards. It has a value system. And that value system is going to be in direct opposition to the Most High. It's going to have rewards. It's going to have punishments, etc. And so by it having that, it's in opposition to the Most High God. If the Most High God say, don't kill. But if the secular standards say, it's okay. If the Most High standards say, we got to preserve life, even in so far as a, a man don't even grab a woman if she's pregnant, or that a woman don't grab a man's genitals. Because this is, we're dealing with sacred stuff here. Then you're at a quandary who you going to obey? I know when Peter had that issue, Peter and John, they said, we'd rather obey God than man. I know Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, they determined we'd rather obey, obey Elohim, our God, than man. Throw, go ahead and throw us in the fire. Daniel said, I'm not going to stop praying. Throw us in the fire. The people in 2 Maccabees chapter 7, go ahead and do what you got to do. Throw us in, go us and cut us up and beat us up and, and drag us apart. Do what you got to do. We are going to serve the Most High God. The time should come that when we're interested in maintaining good works, go ahead and take my job. Go ahead and stop being my wife. Determine you're not going to be loving children anymore. Maybe move me off the neighborhood. Maybe burn my house. Maybe hang me from a tree. Maybe throw me in the river. People may say something like this, Tim, that is ridiculous. Can I take you back a hundred years ago or less? This is 19, well, this is 2024, right? Mm -hmm. In 1924, they had burned down cities. Am I correct? They had terroristically dropped a bomb on Tulsa. Am I correct? Can we say shortly after that, Forsyth County was, the people were told to get out. Can we talk about Rosewood? Can we talk about different places like that? So why would you think that 100 years would make that much a difference when we still act the same foolish way? Maintaining righteous works in the midst of an ungodly situation may be the calls that we have. And if that's the cause that we have and we determine, I'd rather live, Lord. I'd rather live. My friends are more important. I just now finally got some money. I just now got my peace on the pie. I mean, my fish don't even burn in the kitchen anymore. My beans don't. Burn on the grill. Lord, do you know how much trying it took for me to get up on that hill? Now in the big league. How big of the league is it? Because many of us, we're willing to exchange our soul for porridge. Paul tells Titus to tell these people in Crete. And if you want the rest of these, you'll have to go back I haven't learned how maybe somebody, one of the people that will that write in and leave me comments will tell me how to take whatever I put on YouTube and pull them together into a playlist because there's a lot of things that I want to do on my other playlist, especially dealing with history. And I don't think people really want to hear me go up book after book after book as opposed to just giving bits and pieces. Then we look and we all get ourselves enlightened to what the Most High God has done for us, to us, and is intending to do through us if we will turn back to him. So he said, put him in, put him in mind to be subject to principalities, authority, rulers uh, of a celestial type. And if you have a lot of kings and princes in your, in your realm where you live, those are what principalities are. There are two types. There's the human and the celestial. We call them celestial or disembodied spirits and powers 
magistrates and to be to be ready for every good work. This is what he's saying. Now, an individual can say, I don't care what they say. I want to do what I want to do because I'm grown. Well, the verb here is present, it's active, and it's infinitive. That means to keep doing it. It means for an individual to be put under that, not to do evil. But there are things that have been told to us to do that are not evil. They may not be fair. Uh, somebody may say, how can something be fair and not evil? They're not telling you to kill your mother. They're not telling you to go out and stab somebody. They may tell you to move off the sidewalk in this your yard. And they have what is called, they use a word called hegemony, but, how, but let's use the word domain and authority over the land. Just like people can come over here and we say that it's against the law on paper and they can come in New York, they can come in Chicago, they can, they can get, they can get monies up to $10,000 in money. They can, they can get food, they can get place to stay and all of that. And you see, on one side of the paper, it's illegal. On the other, you have people in charge saying that they could come. Well, guess what? They come. Now, when we talk about fair, I don't like the word fair because I don't know what it means when somebody say it. It means fair and accepted that it's talking about somebody that's not an authority. So, so let's say what's the righteous injustice. We'll have a multiplicity of thousands of people that say they're Christians, love God, that are patriots, love God. You may even have people that are that not what you call patriots, and they get on there and they can say that they're patriots and say all kind of egregious things. But what I will say is, when it comes to doing the will of God like Zacchaeus did, I want to restore. I want to build up that which was taken. I want to do that good work even up to half of my kingdom. I'll find that our government that has the hegemony or the rule over us, they say we don't have it. You can't find it. You don't deserve it. And yet when you look at all of the countless trillions of hours, high trillions of dollars worth of value and worth, the lives that have spent underground three and four months at a time digging out coal as much as 5,000 pounds per day per black man and their descendants who many times their parents just got kidnapped walking up the street and locked up until Roosevelt in his wickedness determined that we don't want this happening during World War II. We're being told that you, we have nothing for you all. Nothing. And please don't get me wrong. I'm not begging you for anything. If I had to live on the side of the street, I'd have to live on the street. I would only live there so long till I died, right? Right. But what about the God that looks from up high down low? What about the God that judges every man according to his works? Paul is telling them to maintain good works on the site of those or from the ones that are on the bottom of the, of the tyranny. Please don't make me define tyranny. Please don't make me dis define being whipped out of the bed at night. Please don't make me define being dismembered or branded or beaten or drugged or raped, male or female. But those on the side of the tyranny maintain good works. We still don't have to steal. We still don't have to be liars. We still are able to honor the Most High, even if it costs us. We don't have to take on their ways and have our women dancing on the poles, so much so that when people think about coming to Atlanta, one of the things that people that have a lot of money, they want first, one of the first things they want to do is go to a club downtown where they can see naked women. 
how much different is one naked woman going to be than the other ones you've seen the last time? How much more joy? Can you see something like a drug is taking effect, like a spirit? Somebody do cocaine, but I got to do some more. Got to do some cocaine. Got to do some more. Got to do something else. Got to do some more. He said, be careful to maintain good works. I submit to you. The reason I didn't go, one of the reasons I didn't go through Leviticus 26 is I want to bring it out in a different way. But Leviticus 26 is going to show why the hand of the Most High God comes down on his people in such a way that it looks like if he hadn't have just held some back, we'd be destroyed off the planet. We as a people need to turn back to him. We have, the, we have no power. I was talking to one of my white friends today, and we were just talking about some of the things that's going on. And I asked him, is there a real difference between bringing people in in New York and giving them $10,000 a piece, giving them a place to stay, giving them food to eat, letting them, if they get in trouble, not even have to worry about going to jail and give and giving them benefits that would, should be going to the elderly people that have done the work. For those that are getting elderly and those that are the descendants of slaves and you don't have it, but we have it for Israel, we have it for Ukraine, we have it for other places. The Bible says unequal weights and unequal measures are an abomination unto the Lord. He knows what's going on. Our job is to know what righteousness is, to seek righteousness, to pray for righteousness. But we need to be subject to principalities and powers, obey magistrates, and be ready to every good work and to speak evil of no man. That's the term that if you look at the Greek word, if you're looking on my page with me, blasphemo, it means to slander. Or you could speak evil of somebody if you get to give the definition of what speaking evil is without understanding what blasphemo means. Blasphemo means to blaspheme you slanderously. That's, but you might think speaking evil is saying that person is a crook and you know he's a crook. That lawyer is a liar and you know he's a liar and you're trying to warn somebody. So let's make sure sometimes when we read these words that we try to go back and at least have somebody to help us or some kind of tool to just understand the words because you could understand that completely right if the word that you was using was right, okay? Then it says to be no brawlers, to be gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. When you think of meek, if you think that means being soft, mild-mannered, like some people don't know who Shoeshine Boy was, but I'll give you a little mental break. Shoeshine Boy was, was a little dog. He had a square head. And when something bad was happening, Shoeshine Boy would go into a, we used to have a telephone booth in those days. We didn't have cell phones. You go in there, you dial the number. Then it got the way you could punch the numbers. Well, Shoeshine Boy would open up his watch, a little peel would come out. He could take the pill and he would get strong and he would become underdog. Well, for those that are a little, little older, maybe they got a chance to see a guy that would get beat up and then he'd pop his arm and a little can comes out and it's got spinach in it. And he'd take his pipe, he'd eat the spinach, he'd get strong. Strong to the finish because he eat his spinach. Meekness is not being wimpy, but meekness is when the spirit of the most high God and the words of the most high God, they are inside of you. The spirit is inside of you. The word is inside of you and you have determined whatever it says, do it. Which means sometimes you're going to say no. You don't need any spinach. Now you're strong. You got the spirit. There are some times that you might have to lose a job. There's sometimes you may have to grab somebody because they are affecting or hurting somebody. There are some times that you may end up 
protecting your loved one's life, your daughters, your child, the elderly. You literally may have to grab somebody and you knock them down and they die. And you may go to jail. And you were righteous. But the Most High God explicitly tell us how to look out for the orphan and the widow. Being meek is being humble unto the Most High God no matter what it takes, no matter what the opposition is, that's meek. Let me give you this kind of funny. Yeah, this is a different kind of lesson, but I know it's the same kind of lesson that I have. It's just a different way of delivering it. I remember as a boy, there was a man by the name of Byron Don. He was an elder in our convention. And I used to think that he had memorized the Bible. I didn't know at that time he was reading out the middle of the book. I just know him talking about angel food, corn of heaven, and I didn't know that. I used to record it. I would make stuff in my shop. I had a shop as a boy. And he preached it again, and I said, I never want anybody to be able to read something in the Bible I hadn't read before. That happened to me two or three times in my life, different people. And I determined, I said, well, I won't know as much as they know. I said, but I'll at least know that part. Well, I learned that this person had memorized or was reading out the middle. As I told a guy yesterday, it hurt me to know that, but it still was a benefit to me to learn that. When we see meekness, I thought that it meant weak. I thought it meant like what we would call, I didn't know the word soft serve. I learned that from my son, but I didn't know marshmallow. I learned that one from him too. Wimp, I, wimp, nerd. Because I would read Deuteronomy, not Deuteronomy, I'm reading in Moses, I believe it is Numbers chapter, I don't remember what chapter, I think it might have been the 17. I know it's when Miriam and Arian ran that mouth. And you think you're the only one that God talked to? You think you all at that? And the Bible said, now Moses was the meekest man in the earth. Now, I, I could read, and I knew this was Moses writing this. You know, I, I think I chuckled like you say, you meek I said, I don't think I should say he better do it, but it was something to the equivalent. But I said, but it's in there. As I got older and began to read, I realized you're going to be meek to somebody. You're either going to be meek to your own drugs, your own anger, your own lust, your government, the person you want to lay up with, the person that whatever, you're going to be meek, somebody you're going to be complicit with. And when I saw that Moses was the meekest man on the earth, I began to realize, look at his life. Did he buckle? Did he capitulate? No. Was he a strong force of power? Yes. And I had got to the place when I was young, if they talk trash to Moses, and in my mind, I'm talking about for real, in my mind, I could see Moses falling on the ground. And usually when Moses would fall on the ground, or if Aaron would fall on the ground with him, and they prayed the most I would do something, I still haven't learned that yet. In my 60s. It's perverted, isn't it? But here's the thing. As you get into the newest testament, you find the Bible says the Messiah, I am meek and I'm in low and I'm lowly in heart. You shall find rest to your souls. So when he tells you to in this second verse to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, you're not all this fighting and gentle showing meekness unto all men. We're not talking about duplicity. We're talking about that real power. That real power, that kind of power. Some people say, I don't know about him. He don't say much. Or when he does say something, he means it. He said, for we ourselves were sometimes foolish and disobedient, deceived, serving divers of lust and pleasures, living in malice and envy and hateful and hating one another. I've explained that. I just touched those other two because I wanted to. But here's where I want to go. 
What was the purpose of Yah God bringing us to his kingdom? Well, I can't exhaust that. I can give you a nutshell to be with him in his kingdom. But then if somebody asks me, like my wife asks, and how does that work out? How does that look? See, sometimes she'll ask something like that. And that means you're going to give me a short answer? Nah, I want some more. So he says, but after that, the kindness and love of God, our Savior, toward man appeared. Please don't think mushy stuff because we, we know that the love of God is keeping his commandments. We know the love of God truly is giving his son to redeem us. We know the love of God is to correct those that are his children. And if they are not, they are bastards. So let's not read into it what we call love. Let's read into it kingdom loyalty. But kingdom loyalty don't mean love. Do you want to grasp this in a way that maybe you can hold on to it a little better? Grasp it. It appeared. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. Nobody made him come. When you see the Tower of Babel, you see a religious institution taking place there. You see something that's taken that's happening religiously right there. They were building the tower to the sky. And I used to think when I read it that they were going to go all the way to the sky. And I got to a certain age, they're not going to have any oxygen. They're going to die. But I didn't realize that you can build so high and be like a transmitter, a receiver, and that you can get information back and forth. And then sometimes beings could come down and manifest. With the, with the washing of regeneration. See, he did it according to his mercy. He saved us. All of the world kind had gone away from the most high God. We got eight people left. We call it the flood. And it said, by his mercy, he saved us. He redeemed us from the death penalty that would have been on all of us had he not did what he was able to do through the flood and save one family. Because the Bible says all of the world had already corrupted itself. Now, don't think everybody would have been damned if he had destroyed the world because Enoch, he had already been translated and he should not see death. That doesn't mean nobody else had ever pleased God. I just don't know about him, but I do know about Enoch, the seventh of Adam. And I know about Noah. But let me read, let me read, let me read, let me read. And the, it says in the washing of regeneration to make you new. That's the term. And it says a renewing of the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost it, to renew us to be different people. That's why when people are talking about they are born again, uh, the Greek word is anothen. It's not really born again. You can use born again, but it actually means to be born from above. So therefore, you can see technically why somebody would say born again. But you meet people that say they're born again because they just joined the church got drunk, got a girlfriend that might sing a song like, hey, I've been born again. <laughs> hey. No, 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 no. Being born from above. And it says, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. It's just when you say he shed on us ab abundantly, the washing of regeneration, we are talking about his efficacy of his blood somebody said well why didn't you just say the blood have you really seen jesus blood have you seen the messiah's blood on you have you well it's done spiritually well if it's done spiritually could you really effectively prove that or would it be easy for you to prove he shed his blood and his blood was efficacious for the world? It didn't have to be shed all over the world, all over the sky, all over whatever. When an individual becomes subject to him and they take his yoke upon him and they learn of him and they become in him because he, he is also a human. He is also a spirit. When he's in us, he sends his spirit in us and the father is in us. The blood that was shed, that was efficacious, that paid the price to the father for the penalty 
penalty of sin and satisfied him, it allows us to be in the position of being washed with regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit if we'll be subject to his will. And that was one of the things that I was listening to today that uh, Dr. John Frame was talking about Martin Luther did. Well, you know, my thing is, is that I use what I can, that which I can't, I can't. But he said he shared it abundantly through Christ Jesus our Savior, that we being justified by his grace. Sometimes we need to look at the word as grace as favor. Because when we put that G-R-A in front of it, instead of hen said, we like, oh, that's a magical word. Grace is God's favor. Favor to do what? To become a son. Favor to have sins forgiven. Favor to learn what he wants done so that you do it. Favor so that you will have the ability to have someone to correct you before it's everlasting and found too late. That's what we talked about in Titus chapter 2. That the favor of God or the grace of God, it appears and teaches us to deny ungodly. This is favor. Everyone did not get that favor. Many people died without the covenant of the promise. And they were brought in in the latter days of the temple system. That's why he warns him in Romans chapter 11. You Gentiles, don't you ever have the nerve to boast against the branches. You don't hold up the branches. You didn't come down here from Europe and uphold the people that had followed me, that had already been in Arabia, that had walked across the Sinai Peninsula, and that was over there in Egypt. You did not. For the longest, the isles and the coast of the Gentiles were darkened from the light of God. They were in deepest, darkest Europe. But Isaiah said the light would shine. I've read it. And so what ends up happening, when you are justified by his favor, it's a positional thing, and then it becomes an actual thing. And while it's an actual thing, it's a thing that is maintained. And if the individual determines that they want to go back, just like he says, I believe it's 11 and 27 Hebrews, those individuals could have turned away and left all of the promises God had given them. And we were talking about Abraham in particular when we read that. I think it's either going to be Hebrews 11 and 27 or 11 and 15. I'm thinking 27. I'm not turning to it. He said we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Notice that being justified by his grace, I said it was favor. We should be heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Do you understand that if I say that, that should have some backup? What did the Messiah say in John chapter 17, verse 3? This is life eternal that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. If I don't know you, I don't have them, okay? What does it say in Hebrews 8 and 8 and 10 and 16? It says in one, he's going to write his law on our heart and in our minds and we will all know him. Then the other one says he's going to write it in our minds and our hearts so that we all would know him and knowing him is eternal life. So therefore, grace, if we look at the compendium of what he says, we're justified by his grace that we should be made heirs to the hope that we should live in such a way that it become actualized of the eternal life that's in Christ. Don't tell me you can't lose because Romans 8 and 13 said, if you live after the flesh, you shall die. Jude, slow, don't clap, unclap it. All right, so in Jude, when it talks about the faith that was once given to the saints, in Jude 3, the brother Jesus said, the brother Messiah said, there were certain men crept in unawares, ungodly men who were before of old. They were ordained to that condemnation. They turned the grace of the Most High God into lasciviousness. He said, and I will tell you, though you once knew how the angels that once sinned and they left their own habitation, they left their first estate, their own habitation, has he reserved in the everlasting chains under darkness, under the judgment of the great day. Then he says, I'll have you know this. Listen. The Lord 
after having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believe not. You want to see your picture of salvation? You want to see your picture of redemption? You want to see your picture of the Lamb of God? You want to see your picture of the Lord ra raising up a people to make them a nation to go out and spread his kingdom? That was it. Look at what he did in this pattern. Because he's the same yesterday, today, today, yesterday, today, and forever, according to 13th chapter, verse number 8, Hebrews. Move on down. Verse 8, this is a faithful saying, and these things I will that you affirm, that you that you say with your mouth, that you insist upon constantly, that they which believe in God might be careful, that they might concentrate to maintain good works. Under that gentilic type of Christianity, under that bastardized, arrogant, hard-hearted, rebellious teaching and following of the Israelites that heard the Most High God, that heard his word, that saw his statutes, I mean, that heard his statutes, that heard his covenants, that heard his warnings, that saw his miracles and didn't do, they were the same kind of people. They wanted to follow the nations and look at, what, look at where we are now. But Paul is telling this young man, those that have believed in God, be careful that they maintain good works. For these are good and profitable unto men. I know people tell you your works aren't profitable. None of them has suffered what Paul has suffered so that I would get the gospel or the word of God or the understanding of the Old Testament to the new. I'm going to believe him over them. I believe that's to my wisdom. Mm -hmm, I do. Next verse. But avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable in vain. Notice what is profitable. The good works. Maintain it. What's not foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law. Can you imagine now somebody said, see, Tim, it don't matter if you're Jew or Greek. It don't matter if you're bond or free. It doesn't matter if you're male or female. It doesn't matter if you're black or white or green or red. That's not what he's saying. What? Have you never read the scriptures? Or are you just reading the passage? Notice what he says, avoid foolish questions and gene foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and unvain. Let's look at something. I'm going to go to the middle panel. As I go to the middle panel so I can show you something, what I, what's happening is one of my things is popping up. There we go. Let's go to. Let's go to Philippians chapter three first, because I want you to, if Paul is writing this, and let's see if Paul can keep his own word, okay? In Philippians three, Paul says in Philippians three and one, finally, my brethren, rejoice in Yahweh, rejoice in the Lord, and to write the same things to you, to me, indeed is not grievous, but for you is safe. Beware of dogs, beware of, Evil workers, beware of the concision. The concision is a cut that will go around the male shaft for circumcision. For we are the circumcision. As he's striving about it, now notice he's talking about circumcision. He's talking about something that's under the law. He says, well, we are the circumcision which worship God in spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. If you want to go into all of this, you'll need to go into Acts chapter 15, where they had a big issue about circumcision and certain things that they were keeping 
about the law that were what we would call ceremonial. You would need to be able to go to Galatians chapter two, where he had to withstand Peter to the faith because Peter and different ones, they decided to dissimulate and act as if they weren't doing what they were doing when they got there with other people. And then you would need to go to Hebrews chapter seven, where chapter seven, eight and nine, but seven will tell you that the Levitical law was never to be permanent. What was to be permanent is the law of Christ. He comes after the order of Melchizedek. He's of the tribe of Judah. And when you see the things that were given, those were a shadow of things to come until the time of the Reformation. We taught that book sometime last year. We we spent, we invest, not spent a, a great amount of time in that. And then if you would read on the eight and nine in the book of Hebrews, you will see that a lot of the things were done carnally. Animals, sheep, goats, turtle doves, pigeons, different kind of washings and things of that nature that were to bring you up to the point that you would be able to see Christ. I I just want you to, to see that when he's talking about strivings about the law, you want to learn about the strivings of the law and how it is to be done, then that book of Hebrews would be great for you to learn to read. Now, let's go back to this. He says, though I might have, I'm in verse four, I'm in the middle panel, I'm in Philippians 3, verse 4. Though I might have confidence in the flesh, if any man thinketh he has whereof, he might trust in the flesh, I more. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee. Is there any way in that Paul say, I don't know anything about my genealogy? Is there anything in there that Paul said that my genealogy was nothing? As a matter of fact, what Paul is telling you, if you want to go by genealogy, I'm there. I was right there with Judah. Judah and Benjamin were there together and some of the Levites came. But the only thing that is the most important thing is when you have this is to be with your God who is the father of Abraham, who is the friend of Abraham. If you have that and you don't have your God, you are worse than anybody else because you had the covenants of the promise. You had all the advantages according to Romans chapter three and you didn't listen. And you listened to those that listened to the other being. Read it again, Tim. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews is touching the law of Pharisees concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness, which is in the law, blameless. But those things which were gained to me, I counted those for loss. I counted those for loss. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung that I may win Christ. Now, if you read that and you're ignorant, you don't understand when he say, I do all this for the knowledge of Christ, who was born of the tribe of Judah, who was a seed of Israel, who was a seed of Abraham, who was a seed, that, who, 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 who was the brother, but you might not know that, the brother of Adam. If you don't know these things, you'll think that he's saying that Israel was nothing. And yet, y'all had promised y'all had promised David that your son would sit on my throne. He would execute righteousness. He would execute judgment in the earth, and he would not be a Simeonite. He would not be an Asherite. He would not be a Gadite. He would not be a what you call it an Isaacarite. He would be a Judahite. Israel was not forgotten. Privileges, responsibilities went with that. Without the privileges and responsibility, it was rebellion before the Most High God. Same as witchcraft and iniquity and idolatry through stubbornness. So he says, without Christ, all of that's done. Why would that be done if it's all of that? Because without you being genealogically born from the, with the covenants and the promise, You'd be damned and a man over there in Europe that accepted and they bowed down to the covenants of the promise. He's going to keep his word to Abraham, Abram, Abraham, both of them. 
through you, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. And that's why he says, and I may know him, not having my own righteousness, that which is of the law, when we're talking about ceremonial stuff. But then again, I can't read everything about him, but he'll talk about that he may win him. This is one of the things that Andrina talked about. So I'm going to read this little part right here. Not that I skipped that. I didn't skip that for it. It hurt nobody. You can read it. You see where it is. But the 10th verse says that I may know him. That's eternal life. And the power of his resurrection. And the fellowship. And the fellowship of his sufferings. Being made conformable to his death. That I might. Or that by any means I might attain. To the resurrection of the dead. This is not joke stuff. This is powerful stuff. And this is why back where we were in Titus 3 and 9. Avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contention and strivings about the law. Yes, I could have taken you to Romans 9 and showed you Israel, all through Israel. I could have showed you they were chosen and Esau wasn't. I could have showed you in chapter 10 that he says his heart's in prayer and desiring God for Israel that they might be saved. They have a zeal of God, but not according to, a, to knowledge. And I could show you where Romans 10 and 9 comes explicitly from Deuteronomy chapter 30. Then I can show you again about the olive tree. I don't think I should have to do that because I got other things you can go back and listen to. Let's move on. It says, a man that's a heretic after the first and second admonition reject. There are some people that determine that everything is going to be about genealogy and no spirit. Genealogy and no word. Why do you think we've been scattered all over the world? A man that just thinks that his flesh and blood with no spirit or a man that feels that everything that he does can override the word of God when he say he's going to bring other sheep in that he have that are not of this fold. They ain't of this fold yet. Yeah, you know I mean, maybe some now because it's been about 2,000 years. The other sheep that I have, which are not of this fold, then I must bring there'll be one shepherd and one flock. And he says, a man that's a heretic after the first, you want to keep making people circumcised? You want to keep making people offer animal sacrifice, et cetera, and libations, whereas Christ is the end of the law to them that believe are the goal of the law? Reject. Where'd you get that from? About 10 and 3 Romans, maybe 10 and 2 Romans. But it says, knowing that he that is such is subverted, that means he's perverse, and sinneth being condemned in himself. This is where Paul was. This is where Paul was. This is where many people would be. And that why I, that's why I believe the book of Hebrews was so poignant because it helped clear out the cobwebs. Now notice, he says, when I send you Artemis and Titius, be diligent to come unto me into Nicopolis. For I have determined there to winter. Bring Zenus the lawyer, and Apollos on their journey. Now, that's a mighty man right there, too. I don't know much about Zenus. I looked him up, and it just told me he was a lawyer, and he was a minister, so I didn't, I didn't read it in, in today. It says, on their journey diligently, that nothing be wanting unto them. Look at him go back to this. And let us let ours learn to maintain good works for necessary uses. Somebody say it's not mandatory, it's just optional. Well, just in case you think foolishly in your heart, John chapter 15, verse 1, Jesus says, I'm the true vine and my father is the husband man. In John 15 and 6, he told his disciples, you have not chosen me. But I've chosen you and I ordain you that you should go forth, should, a obligatory word, go forth and bring fruit and that your fruit should remain. And whatsoever you shall ask my father in my name, he'll give it to you. That's not enough? All right, let's look at what I got you. Another one. I'm so kind. Look at Second Peter 2, 5. Besides all this, add all diligence, add to your faith virtue. Virtue, knowledge, that's right, knowledge, into knowledge, temperance, temperance, patience, patience, godliness, godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall, uh, that you, that ye shall not be barren 
nor unfruitful. Paul said, maintain good works that you will be barren or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. He that is barren, he that is unfruitful, he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and have forgotten that he was purged, not is purged, he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore the rather, brethren, make your calling and election sure. Don't be talking about you called and you saved. Look at what he says. Can you read well? And what Andrina used to say, some people can't read well. It says, make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. For so an interest shall be ministered to you abundantly where? In the everlasting kingdom of the everlasting life that we were talking about, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's go back and finish the beautiful book of Titus. And so he let us learn, let ours learn to maintain good works for necessary uses that they be not unfruitful. All that are with me salute thee. Greet them in love in the faith. Grace be with you all. Amen. You know, when some people say amen means something that's Egyptian, just because something sounds something in a different language doesn't mean it's the same word. The same word. Please don't fall for that, okay? It said, grace be with you all, amen. It was written to Titus, ordained the bishop of the church of the Cretans from Nicopolis and Macedonia. Are we going to be the kind of people that we don't realize that the Most High God came here to bring us into his kingdom, to build it up, and to maintain good works? It's not just to save you and go to heaven. It's about us doing the work in the earth, bringing about righteousness, justice, and peace. Why? Because we're meek. We've learned to be meek. We've learned what our position is genealogically. We learn not to let it over supersede that which is from the Most High. We learn that the Spirit of the Most High give us what we need. We learn that the Word of God is the very thing that shows us no matter what kind of rituals were done before with animals, it can't supersede the Christ. And therefore, not only do we have a better hope, a better resurrection, but now the spirit is supposed to be written in our hearts to the praise of his glory. I end my class right now, and I hope that this is the kind of class that make you think. It's not just a joke. This is, real, this is real stuff. Some of us may not even be here tomorrow. Some of us may not even be here next year. We can probably think of at least two or three people we know that are gone. Are we going to be meek to the most high? Are we going to be meek to the very things that bring us down? Because that's normally what people are meek to. They meek to whatever it is they love. And I'm talking about they love it with all their might. So Father, I ask you by your might, Look upon us with mercy. Have mercy for, upon us according to your loving kindness. Teach us your ways. Teach us your word so that we'll live according to your holy and righteous will. I ask this in the blessed name of your holy child, Yahshua, Jesus. Amen. Amen. And even so, amen. I open this class for discussion if there's going to be any discussion tonight. If there's not going to be any, that's okay too, but I'm I'm here waiting. I don't have anything to add, but it was very clear. Thank you. Yeah, it was good. Thank you. I do well. I said I don't, so I'll say what I like. I I mean I liked it all, but I I I do like how you focused on the genealogy thing. Um. I, I, when people say that often, almost every case, they haven't really read the text to understand what the issues were culturally mm -hmm. back then. Um, so to lift it 
and not even think of the historical context as you were you were talking about sometimes a word being the same or not the same from one language to the language to the other and and that's something but when when that point is raised okay well contextually and historically this is what it means often uh, at least in my case um that's kind of hushed or or not accepted per se so anyway the, I, I thought it was um good to to focus on that because it, it it would seem if one doesn't take that into consideration you can see why they think they're right <laughs> you you made me think of something and when 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 it came across my mind i was like wow just just take a look at this you, can you still see my screen i do all right, just just look at this. But I see you. I I don't see the text that you're. I, you're don't see your I think Andrina was Andrina pretty much saying the same thing you were saying. I'm I'm not sure. Probably. Yeah. Okay. okay. I was gonna say probably was. Look at this. James one and one. James, a slave or a servant of God, and our Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve tribes which is scattered abroad. Now, for those that don't know what the 12 tribes are, they the word, they have no idea what just happened there, do they? Mm -mm. <laughs> they have not. It's like, oh no, we haven't we haven't forgotten Israel. Yep. This is this is to them primarily. Like, don't get it twisted. And so th these are just some of the things that came to my mind because I didn't even think about it till. You said what you said. And then look at this one. Peter. I'm in 1 Peter 1 and 1. Apostle of Jesus Christ to the strangers scattered about through Pontus, Galatians, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God our Father and through sanctification of the Spirit. And he goes on down. But if an individual don't know who the strangers are, it shouldn't take them long to figure out who it is. And then we're going to look at the elect. Paul talks about the elect, I believe, is in Romans chapter 9. So the real the real issue is so many times he talks about it without even that. My God, I shouldn't read, I shouldn't read Hebrews, right? That's enough. Yeah. I just thought I'd just throw that there for free. Well, it, it really, when that argument or that notion is held without really listening to someone try to make it clearer mm -hmm. because a lot of times you talk to people and, and you say there's more context and you start telling them about history often they don't want to hear that that's right and so it perpetuates any uh, uh, i'm going to say a so-called erased history because we can say we erase it but it's it's not going anywhere it's really it's really like the blood of cain crying out mm -hmm. in one sense so it, like when you when you go in Deuteronomy and we look at the the curse that was given and we and we follow that curse throughout their disobedience. So that's the whole of the scripture. And then we say, OK, like you you mentioned, there's other sheep I have of this fold. If we look at it, you talk um, years ago, Leviticus, and I, of course, I had never heard of anybody about Leviticus. <laughs> And you were talking about the priest, and you said there's 70 priests, and you said, well, go, and I remember you were going through all those sacrifices, and I remember thinking, okay, this is tedious, but it's important. And then Peter says we're like priests. And so when when you start looking at that and 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 in conjunction with the scattering of let's say the nations, mm -hmm. there's something there pe people don't want to hear. And it's like, well, there's promises that are made, and you you can be a part of this. But um, some it's just sometimes people. I'm gonna let me take something. Else. Often people don't want to hear that. It's like we're gonna skip over this. We're gonna skip all over this, and we're gonna get our blessings right now. So, uh, it was very plain and simple. Simple. I mean, simple in the sense that I think it would be easily under understood well, I think if one were listening so um I, I think that was good hopefully hopefully many will listen thank you
is there anyone else? Because he said don't be boasting. <laughs> mm -hmm. They do it anyway, Gary. They do it it's anyway. It's true. It's so true. <laughs> but that's a testimony, though, to their unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it will be judged. It will be judged. This Great was really job. This was good. Um, I, you know, the, when you gave your title, my mind first went to you know because I'm answering the question. I, I'm not even waiting for you to give it to me. <laughs> okay. And I'm listening, but it's like in my mind, my mind is rolling. Like, oh, that question. And the first thing oh, I thought about it. it Huh? It's too open ended, isn't it? It is, and I'm trying to figure out what is he gonna say, where is he gonna go. Anyway, so you know, you mentioned um, you mentioned Genesis 12, right? Where you say all the nations was that 12 you were mentioning? It, all the nations will be blessed. If through I said Abraham. 12, I should have said 11, but yes, yeah, in Genesis. I don't think you said 11. I just think you just quoted it. Okay, well, we good. You just quoted it. And then I was thinking about there's a variation of that, or an extension of that blessing in Genesis 18. It is. And 19, and that gives you the real purpose. Like, you're not just being brought into the family. That There's something that Abraham's going to do if you can pull that up and let people see. All right. Because that's, to me, that's the starting point. If anybody's going to say they're a child of Abraham, they have to be taught this by him. Because he says, he's going to, I know him, he'll teach his household. Is it 18 and? Hey, I'm in Genesis 18. 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18 19. Let me, I'm, I'm sliding just as, let's see, in Abraham, he buried. I don't know how this thing got to 23. So maybe when I was scrolling it, it went from 18, you know, because I'm using a trackball. Okay. The 18, where the good stuff was. All right, we there. Because he tell him he will he will demand his children. So 18, 18 is I think the same thing is like what? You're right. LVS. I should never forget that because that's a double number. And the Lord says, Shall I hide from Abraham? The thing which I do. So See? this is this is Sodom. This is mm -hmm. about the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. Absolutely. And he's been so faithful. It's like I'm not going to hide things from him. There's a lesson in that that the Most High will show you things. Mm -hmm. The Creator will show you things. He can give you insight. He'll even give you access to Him to plead for other people. You know that sort of thing, but there's a there's a, a a real issue here that we need to see because it's just not given. It's just not given. It's just not because he just because he left, you know, uh, Ur, you know, and left into a place that he didn't know. But there's something else the the Most High said he would do. Would do it. Okay, you ready for me to show it now? Yes. He I said he in verse that. 18, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, a great and mighty nation, and all of the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him, and he will command his children and his household after him, and they will keep the way of Yahweh. To do justice, to do justice, I'll say it again, to do justice and judgment, and that Yahweh may bring upon Abram, Abraham that which he has spoken of him. That it just that justice and justice don't leave him, does it? That justice and judgment does not leave him if you're not doing that. You can't be of this fold. You cannot be a child of Abraham. You can't be a child of Abraham if you have the genealogy of Abraham. That's right. You cannot be the child of Abraham if you don't, if you don't do this. 
And this is a part of what I was thinking, like, this is why he brought us in. This is why people are claiming the faith of Abraham, you know, in so many ways. And But they're not doing these things. Mm -mm. We're supposed to look at them as, or as if they are, and we're supposed to join ourselves to them because they claim that they've been blessed or they the seed or somehow, but we know and we see that they're not doing this. They're not doing righteous judgment. They're not doing justice. But we, but in, and it's like, okay. So then my mind went to, I don't know I'm going places, but help me if I'm just, if I'm leaving you or if no, I'm- No, no I, I thank God that you ain't left me yet now. The, the next scripture I thought about in the why did he bring us in the purpose was Leviticus. Leviticus 18. Okay. And there is a scripture there. Mm -hmm. I want to say it's 18 and 30. After you get all of these things that these commands. Shall I read? Yes. Therefore, you shall keep my ordinance that you commit not any one of these abominable customs which were committed before you and that you defile not yourselves therein. I am Yahweh Elohim, the Lord your God. As a matter of fact, it says Yahweh Atim Elohim. That means Yahweh your God. I'm not just Yahweh uh, the Lord, or uh, Yahweh your Elohim. I mean Yahweh Elohim. I mean Yahweh your Elohim. I'm putting some. I'm putting some stuff on it. Okay. So he says he's. He said there are some customs. Yes. There are some customs in the earth that already exist. Mm -hmm. People in nations doing some heinous things. Heinous things. That's what I meant to say. Heinous. They are doing some heinous things and they're, they're against nature. They're against creation. They're giving their children to the fire. Uh, they're Moloch. They're doing, they're having ungodly sexual, making ungodly sexual acts. They're doing a lot of things. Now I'm choosing you out of all nations to keep my way, as he said. He said, Abraham would teach those who love him, who come unto him to keep mm -hmm. the way. Yes. This is the purpose. This is our purpose. But this is how we get out of the way. We start doing the customs. Yes. We start doing the customs and we've been subjected to many customs, especially here. We know that from the New Testament where it says, well, you know there's another Jesus. That's and right. you know there's another spirit. And you know there's another gospel. What? Yes. And we, be and we better learn that. But it says be subject, like you were reading. <laughs> no, you don't supposed to be subject. But we have been. I got we that. Been, we uh, learned about. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I just said I got your other Jesus up there. If you wanted to read it on the right side, in case you needed it, okay. Okay, but I wanted to. I wanted to point that out to say that there is another what they call way. It is, and that the nations have already done it through their customs. Mm -hmm. And this is what they've taught us. So we got another Jesus. We got yeah. another. Well, we got another redeemer and the redeemer was in the form of a sodomite yes image. this white sodomite person and, and this image was given to us you talking about Borgia or one of the other ones yeah that one these are Borgia Why you First, the image that she wasn't supposed to be. Go, I'm gonna pull him up while you talk. But through that image, mm -hmm. they broke a lot of customs. 
I was going to tell you, you need to tell everybody who's watching who he is so they'll know. You say that name, it might not mean anything to anybody. That's true. That's true. I think they did orgies too when they decided to take his daggum face and put it on there. But we know, we know the real. Orgia. You know, if you're showing it, the, the screen didn't change, sweetie. It was supposed yeah. to change. I told it new share, but that's okay. I'm glad I got you. <laughs> new share. Did it do it this time? Yes. Okay. This. Mm -hmm. They give you the image of themselves. <laughs> Sodomite, because they talked about that in, 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 in Leviticus, right? Mm-hmm. You start understanding this is a custom. You take this image, you say, oh, and you put it on your wall. Oh, you know, we've been guilty of that. We got little figurines and everything. Candles with this, with this image on the outside of it. Mary on the outside of it. These are customs that they gave. And we forgot about judgment and justice. We forgot about righteousness. And so we under this new regime. And this new regime, the, the other Jesus or the only Jesus, because nobody else is named Jesus in the Bible, okay? Okay. If nobody else is named Jesus in the Bible, they gave us this Jesus. They keep came along with this image. And he is the exact opposite of the one we read about. He is. He sure don't look like a Judahite. He doesn't look like a Hamite. He doesn't look. Uh, he doesn't even look like the Persian guard. You know they had that um that show is like with a real person. Please stand up. Uh, yeah, yeah. They knew that when I was a boy. You know, it is like we learn about the real one. We learn about the real one when it comes to Luke. You know the one I love, Luke 1. Mm -hmm. We learn about the real one when he comes, what he should do, his purpose for coming. And we learn that they, they, this was the total opposite. This didn't happen for us when we saw this image in the people who carried it. We were not delivered. No. We were subdued by enemies through this image. Jim, I think say a little bit about him. I mean, it wouldn't need a, a son of one of the popes and they would get together and have prostitutes and have orgies and stuff all over the place. And yeah, tell us about you know, him. Because I mean you just showing I, that I, picture. I, actually, I'm gonna pull him back up. And Gary, let me let you go with where you're going and let me go after you. So it's been a minute since I read it, but it, it's okay. I still love you. <laughs> okay. That's that's an important thing. <laughs> Is this the one you want me when we go back to the other one? Um, that's more like what they I think how it's changed a little bit. The if you go back to the first group of pictures. Okay. Let me get out of this one. And screen sharing has stopped window. I know. That's so nice you to tell me screen sharing has stopped. It's so it's so beautiful. Open Google. Give me a, give me a second to click click. But um, when I first when I first heard about the siege of Borgia, I was shocked. I didn't e I didn't even know. But I guess I probably wasn't the only person in the world to know, right? You were not. All right, you got it typed in. Mm -hmm. Cause when I first when I first did it, and it went to the other one, it what it did it took it when it went to um that Facebook Kendrick. Those that don't know what Kendrick is, 
That's just whenever I can't think of the word to say, I'll just say Kendrick. It works so well. Hmm. It's, it's really not even showing me. So that's why you need to go ahead and talk, cause it's like I'm telling well, it what the I'm telling it what to do. And well, what I had um read about him yeah. was um because they weren't showing uh, uh a true depiction of the Messiah that they had determined that I don't remember which pope he was, but they took the image of one of the pope's sons, and um during around this time they would um they would uh get together and they would have orgies and they would have prostitutes and the men and the women would be all there together they would be naked and doing stuff and i don't i don't remember exactly what the the connection was but there's a connection and that's what they were doing culturally and if it was a pope he was supposed to be you know following the the word of the, of the most high and so they determined that they would take this guy his son's picture this borgia dude says that borgia and um put that out as the image of the Christ and it became very accepted and it was one of the the main one that got um what's the word um it proliferated the word it was used a lot I don't know if that was a if I made that word up no but... yes yeah, Spanish didn't give you a new word that that's the word so yeah so even with the image, the image was not pure. Mm -hmm. Oh no. The image, the image was not sinless. The image, you know, and this, <laughs> and as our savior. And it's like, why when you ain't saved though? Like, why we've been all of this is why are we not saved? We we can read this and we can understand that the purpose of him coming. Why are we subdued? Why are we captured? Why are we jailed in prison like Isaiah talks about? <laughs> like, why he why is he not setting us free? Wrong one. We've been, and it is such a thing of worship does mean something to yeah. understand and to give yourself to something that is unprofitable. Even Proverbs say you can do that with a whore. Yes. You can give yourself to something that is unprofitable. All of your energy, your time, your money. That's been us. We've lost the purpose of him bringing us into his kingdom. Because we got these customs. We've been given these customs. We've been given Christmas. What's coming up next? Easter. Ashtar, mm -hmm. you've been given these things. Wow. This is how we are st still subdued. This is why we can't see what is happening. It's all written here. We've given in to the things that he said. Don't give in to the customs in Leviticus 18. There's a part of worship that you're doing, and it says it's vain. Jeremiah said, it's vain. It doesn't profit you at all. And yet you skipping around and running around the church and falling out and saying you slain in the spirit. All of that foolishness was given not, to you. Not alive, but slain. That's the, that's the, the other. The other. But the real purpose was in Luke 1. Yes. That redemption would come to us, that we will be saved from our enemies and from the hands of those that hate us. We don't even talk about people hating us. No. We don't even talk about enemies in the church. Oh, and it's just, quote unquote, Satan. As if he don't have ministers. As if there is not another way. We were captured by our enemies with this image. That's that's how Miss Brumfrey changed her name to Sojourner Truth. 
because she thought the white man was Jesus when she found out when she found out she changed her name. Mm-hmm. And the other spirit. What 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 does it say in what is it? Um the spirit is mentioned in in um John 16. And the spirit would come to convince the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. Is that the one you want? That's it. 16, 16 and 8. 8. Isn't it the opposite? 8 through 11. Is it, isn't it the opposite? Yeah. Haven't we been doing the opposite? Yeah. Haven't we been taught to do the opposite? Don't be judging nobody. Yeah. Don't be talking about sin. Because there ain't no sin. They, oh, don't judge. Judge not. Haven't we been doing the wrong thing? Hey, we, we've been absolutely giving the other. Yes. And, that's, and that is one good work we don't maintain. We ready to give forgiveness before we even rectify our situation. Yeah. And what, we, <laughs> what our forgiveness really ends up being is pandering. He's going to reprove the world of sin. No, they say, you know, all sin is the same. You could just go through so many things. They say sin is non-existent. You, you're going to be forgiven for all your sins once you say you plead the blood or once you say you believe in Jesus and you, you have no sins and you can do anything you want from that time on just because you confess one time that you can rape, rob, pillage, throw people in prison unjustly, Steal their, still confiscate their goods for your own pleasure. Deprive them even human rights. Yes. And say that no, they are, that's that's not a sin. I pled the blood. I said I believe in Jesus. That's it. That's that same <laughs> thing I got from that Catholic woman, that little scapula. That if I put that on me and I go do anything wrong, if I get killed in the act, I still go to heaven. Well, you think I wouldn't be dumb enough to not get me one tattooed on me and blessed by the priest? Mm. Why would I buy one that can come off if all I got to do is get him to bless it? Makes no sense, does it? But you see where we are and you see where we've been and you can see how we got there because we haven't been reading correctly. Let me show you something. In Exodus chapter 21, verse 24, if all sins are the same, an eye for an eye is the punishment unless there's satisfaction. A two for a tooth. A hand for a hand, a burning for a burning, a wound for a wound, and a stripe for a stripe. Just think about all of the retribution that's owed in this country that hadn't been paid yet. Now, uh, if all of them are the same, let me roll back to 21. A 16. He that stealeth the man or selleth him, if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. Wait a minute. Is an eye and a hand different? Is an eye and a foot different? When you look at the penalty, you see it's not the same. It's not. The story of sin, but the, the severity. He that curses father or mother shall surely be put to death. Now that's in the same category. But one is that you, you have gone into a spiritual level. You have actually put to death or you have Curse father, mother, someone that's in the position of the most high God. It's imperative that we as parents begin to learn our right role in the family. And so when they make that statement of asininity or perversity, you would think that a lie wouldn't put you to death. Wouldn't you think that just telling a lie wouldn't put a person to death? Would you think that a lie would not cause somebody to lose their eye? or their hand, but I submit to you, all lies aren't the same. Why do you yeah. say they're not the same? Look what it says right here. Deuteronomy 15, 
I mean, Deuteronomy 19 and 15. One witness shall not rise up against any for any sin. For any sin that he sinneth. At the mouth of two or three witnesses shall the matter be established. If a false witness rise up against any man to testify that which is wrong, then both he and whom the controversy is shall stand before the Lord, before the priests and the judges in those days. They shall make diligent inquisition. And behold, if the witness be a false witness and have testified falsely against his brother, then you shall do to him as he thought to have done to his brother. You shall put the evil away from you, and they which remain shall hear and fear, and shall henceforth commit no much such evil among you. Yet I shall not pity, but life for life. What if the life was not a life? But it's life for life, like one of those Karens you were trying to get him killed, you get put to death. But if it's just eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, now these are lies. Here is a lie that can cost you your life, your eye, your tooth, your hand, or your foot. So in order to understand the gravity of judgment, what does the Most High say the penalty will be? But no, we say a lie becomes the truth. You got your truth. I got my truth. He going to tell his truth. He going to speak truth to power. But is he lying? <laughs> uh, we don't want judgment. As I was telling this brother yesterday, I said, look, we need to be like Solomon. We really need to start paying attention what righteous judgment is. Our time may be coming for us to lead. And God knows we don't want to start leading. And it's like, well, what we got to do? What kind of laws we going to have? Well, until we do, let's use the ones they got now. Let's keep people locked up in jail that we know that shouldn't even be there. Let's don't give people any restitution. You took 30 years out of their life, and yet you were giving millions and billions of dollars to all these other places over the world. And then you're bringing other people in your county that they have the ability once they get here to even outvote you and take over your school, take over your home. And if they decide what we want to do is make certain people with certain disease or certain skin colors leave, eventually if you get to be in charge, you can do that. You know, that was good. That was so good because these are things that we miss, that we live. Mm-hmm. We exist and we swear we love God and we read the Bible. We are missing this. That this is real life. Like you like, oh well, that's just religion. It is not. There is no separation. There is no separation from the book and you and your life. There's no separation, but you've been taught that there's a separation. Of church and state, well, you know, I don't get into that. You know, I go to church for that. But when you come out in the world, you're just another worldly person. You take on the customs of the ones he said that needed to be destroyed. Shame their, on their mores. Shame their on us. Yes, because they're only going to oppress you. And then you call yourself a child of Abraham. It says in Luke 1 and 73, the oath that he swore to our father Abraham to grant us the oath he swore an oath to Abraham. That's Let's see what the oath really is. Let's get with the oath that they saw it as, the people who came before us, the biblical people. That he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our lives. And you know, when I was a child, that was taught to mean that you're going to be part of the church of God holiness. I would to God that the church of God would have been this. We could have we could have been ruling Georgia. But what actually existed? Fear. Yes. Unrighteousness. Yes. Unholiness. 
all of these things existed, but we've been given this. And no this doubt many people on. would have done right if we had it had it modeled. And and many of us have found advantage in wickedness. You can get some money, you can tell the same lie and get the same money that the white people get. Yeah. I had a person today, Andrina, that they were going to pay me. And they said, uh, you didn't get paid. I said, no, ma'am. So she getting ready to give me the money. And she remembered, well, I finally realized she was talking about another time, not the last time. And she was going to pay me both. I know, because they could afford it. I know. No. No. Mm -mm. That ain't what I'm talking, I'm talking well, about. You got paid before you left. Huh? You got paid before you left the other time, I think. Yeah, but I'm talking about somebody from last night. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, because it's like, you know, once it almost seemed like when I got, when I had my situation, it seemed like people were dragging, but the most I still faithful. Because, um, you know, that's another issue, but you do, it is amazing that when we go through things, we experience new things, and it's like, wow, um, I'm having a lot of difficulty, but he's still letting me make it to the end. Wasn't that, isn't that beautiful? Uh -huh. and, but, it's, but, but see, that's the time when somebody say, you know, I've been hurt. I ain't been able to do stuff. I've been having to do stuff different times, different ways, spending money. And here come, here come the Lord blessing me. It ain't no blessing. But this is <clears throat> this is what we've been taught though through customs. Yes. We've been cheated. And we've and sometimes we can feel like, well, I well, I've been cheated. Yes. I shouldn't. I mean, if the if this is opportunity to arise for me, won't I do it? Can I get gain in the same way? Haven't I been done this way? And you can make up everything in your mind. Yes. Every reason in your mind to take on the customs and the ways of this world. But there was a purpose for us, for our salvation. That, and it, it, even with the, it, the other gospel. See, we did the, the other Jesus. We did the other spirit. Now there's the other gospel. What's the good news? We're going to come in your land. We're going to colonize you. Yep. He brought us to this kingdom to be a part of him and rule. And we think we just supposed to come up and like what's that animal that does that? Is that a seal? Yeah. <laughs> it ain't what he brought us for. The real gospel. Yes. We hear in Isaiah. He speaks to us in Isaiah 61. <clears throat> and it's everything we need. Oh, it's everything we need as a people. We need our people to be out of prisons. Yes. So many of our people are in prison. Yes. Unjustly. Yes. Because there's another law. They tell you ain't no law. They're lying to you. There is another law. And the law is unrighteous. And they can lock you up. They make up new things. Because they don't want the law the most high. Mm -mm. They're going to make up another way. We're going to make up other laws. They say, you know, your, your goods need to be confiscated for this. Or you need to be in prison for this. Or, you, or, you know, if you don't go with this carbon thing, that's, you know, that's the law. This is righteousness now. If your carbon footprint is small, this is righteousness now. But then you can go to other countries in your jet. In your airplane and go have sex with children. Yes, yes, and yes. And your carbon footprint being small, but you go over here and do immoral things. In your dirty footprint. 
You can go over here and buy a woman who's in poverty and do all kind of things to her. Because you, she's poor because you made her that way. You take advantage of the poor, the impoverished. But you create famines. And you tell me that that's righteousness now. You tell me that it's better for me to walk and to ride a bicycle places. That's righteousness now. But you get in your SUV and go pick up a whore. And you have a wife. And then you can get up in church and there say you that you're righteous. Yeah. And somebody coming against you and the churches can give you awards and the yeah. churches can feel like you're the greatest thing. Because guess what? Maybe we get a chance to be with you. Maybe we can get some benefit from male or female. And these are the same people that stand up in your black churches. These heinous people. You let Joe Biden come into your church and he locked up all your black men with the 94 crime bill. He locked them up unjustly. And you let him come into your church and preach to you standing in your pulpit. Yes. What kind of madness is this? Because you are hurling. You are hurling. You don't care about the sheep. Messiah talked about you all. I'm getting mad. I'm going to stop talking to him. All right. I'm going to stop talking. <laughs> scary. Will the real Andrina please come out? Get mad. Okay. Ooh. All right, look, I'm going to close the class and I'm going to gear up if the Lord's will for for Sabbath. And I'm going to try to bring some more thunder because we we need to be able to have something when we come away that we can have something that jar us in the midst of all of this going on because we get used to it. We get nose blind. We get eye blind. We get custom blind in the Most High God set. I'm still the way. I'm still the truth. I'm still the life. Father, thank you for your blessed word, for your might and your glory. Show us how to say it. Just as hard as you want, say it. Say it. Just as tender as you want it. Say it when you want it. Say it tender. Just as what is called radical. However you want it, say it. And however you want it lived, let us be your servants to the praise of your glory to the time you take us home. Amen. Amen. And amen. You all, I appreciate you all taking me, helping the message grow like it needs to grow to the praise of his glory. Amen. Amen. And I thank every one of you all and I love you. Good night. Good night. Love y'all too.